Hi, my name is Amy. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm sitting in one of my spare bedrooms and I have a question for you. If you have a spare bedroom, specifically a bedroom, what do you use them for? Do you use it for storage or maybe a craft or sewing room, a toy room? Well, in my case, I use them as guest bedrooms and I focused the decor uh, around all the things that my kids left or were in their bedrooms previously when they lived here. Um, I have two kids. They have both have grown and moved out. My son is uh, moved out of state, started his veterinarian career. And my daughter and son-in-law only live about two miles away with my awesome two-year-old little grandson. So what I wanted to do was incorporate a two to three color color palette and decorate around those colors and then bring in a, a, a few of the personal things that they have left behind so that if they visit or need to stay over at any time, it's just a nice comfortable space uh, for them for when they're here. So I'm gonna show you my son's room first and then next door, I'll show you my daughter's room. So let's get the tour started. So starting with my son's room, I had no idea what color palette I wanted to choose, but being the garage sailor that I am, I stumbled upon this entire set uh, it was brand new. The tags were still on it. The lady was selling it because she decided to change her mind. And so I thought this would be perfect because it's a more of a masculine bedding. And it's got like this dark burgundy, tan, and black. So I thought, okay, there's my three colors. And it used to have um, a matching wooden headboard that was a little bit younger looking. So when this headboard became available to me when he left it here from college, when he had one of his apartments, I thought how perfect would that be to switch that out and kind of break up the wall a little bit. So I color matched this tan color to the walls. We painted the walls tan, all four walls. And then the geometric uh, wall decor here I used to have in my daughter's bedroom and it was all different colors. So what I did is I took some of the squares here and then just color matched these colors that are in the bedding with some craft paint and colored over what these originally were. I think they were like a hot pink and uh, colors that she had in her bedroom. But I thought it was perfect because it, it matched like the geometrical design on the bedding. So your decor doesn't have to be expensive. You just have to get creative and shop in your own house first and see what you have. So I thought that turned out really nice for $7. When I looked closer at the bedding, when I was setting up this whole entire area, I noticed that the brand name on it was Mainstay, I believe. So I hurried up and looked online to see if there was any sheets or any other thing I could use because I wanted to make a matching curtain. So what I did was I looked it up and because it's a little bit older, um, it was discontinued. So I thought, where am I going to get something that matches this? So I bought a shower curtain. They had a matching, uh, like a bathroom shower curtain set that went with this bedding. So I bought it. It came and I found this amazing bench. Now this was country blue and white plaid with blue legs. And I found it on Marketplace. I think it was about, I think it was literally like $5. And I got to it first, the lady was saving it for me, and I took it home and I took the, the pad off and I covered it with the shower curtain and I staple gunned it. If you've ever reupholstered anything, it's very easy. You just match up your print on the front and tuck it over on each four sides and then you just staple gun it and then screw it back onto the legs, which I painted black. Had a couple extra black spare pillows to put there. And so for underneath the window, I had extra fabric so I just made a, a little simple valance, which is just one hem put on a rod. And now everything matches. Is bedding, the bench, and the window curtain. So another item I found at a garage sale for about $8 was this little shelf unit here. And the same lady that sold the bedding must have gotten some decor for it already. And then she changed her mind. So I have found this. And then this little piece here. And then I had that sign down there, which ironically matched everything. And then I just put a fake greenery plant there. And then I took a lot of his prints, one of his first trips he ever took. Being a veterinarian, he loves animals as well as I. And he went to Africa for one his freshman year in college. And so what I did was I put one of his pictures here. He went to a place where... All it is is cheetahs and lions and uh, amazing, amazing experience. So I wanted to take a lot of his pictures 
and put them in his own room. So I put them over here and then I put some more over here. So anytime he comes home, he's got some memories of his wonderful trip he took. I've got his one of his college diplomas, went to so many years of school. And I just put some little bit more masculine decor here. I love accent lights everywhere, so I thought might as well put them in a bookcase so I have that light on all the time. And then that's actually his kitty, Sierra. So I framed that for him. And then this is one of his lamps from college that he had in his apartment. I just got a black shade for it, and I think it was a white shade originally. And then there's his kitty again, Sierra. So I framed that. And then his, in his nightstand, he's just got a couple of his yearbooks from high school. He got a kind of like a, a, a similar yearbook for college. And so I put that there. And then all his drawers are empty in case he needs to put anything in there if he comes to stay and visit. But the best part is when you have a spare closet in your house, you utilize it. Well, let me show you. I collect literally everything and I absolutely love decorating for pretty much every occasion and holiday possible. And I have a front porch and a back porch that do not get wet when the when it rains or snows. So I have bought tablecloths and runners and blankets and pillows that I can use outside. But where do you put all these things when you've accumulated napkins and napkin rings and table runners and all that kind of thing? Well, you put them in a closet that you now have that is empty in the spare bedroom. And so now all my table runners are on hangers. So it keeps them nice and wrinkle free. And then I uh, bought a collapsible shoe rack and put all my napkin holders in there. And then here's some boxes from my son that I haven't gone through yet, but they're in the corner and they really don't bother me. How many of you have boxes of your kids stuff still at, still at home while they've moved away? They left it for you to go through. Me, so, and then a couple blankets up there and some extra pot holders. And then I found this little Stairlight uh, three drawer unit at a garage sale, a couple dollars. These are awesome to have. I have them in pretty much every room. So my placemats fit absolutely perfectly in these drawers. So I have like three drawers of placemats that now stay nice and organized. And then this little organizer here, this bin here is for cloth napkins. I keep a lot of my table, the dining room and the kitchen table always set. So I always have kind of a cloth napkin on each table. And then my newest collection. <laughs> um, so I love pillows and I put pillows, like I said, everywhere on the benches, inside, outside. And I've been buying the pillow inserts lately. So instead of having a whole bunch of pillows that you don't know where to store, I've been buying the inserts and then just getting covers for them for pretty much every occasion. So I've got like St. Patrick's Day and Easter, got a couple winter ones, a Halloween one, and then I have bumblebees on my front porch and I found these cute bumble, it's a cute bumblebee. And I've got 4th of July. So I've started this collection. So I'm sure by my next video, I'll have more to show you because that's my newest obsession. But I wanted to show you um, a couple of the runners that I got from garage sales. And these are the like the long 70 inch runners, but they're just so cute. And I really don't understand how people sell these kind of things. I, I just I just love them. So I even found a turkey one that's reversible to like a fall print on the back. And it's got these cute tassels. And then, I mean, look at, look at how much they are. A dollar, are you kidding me? So usually when I go to garage sales, I'm super excited when I leave with things like this. So that's what I did to utilize an empty closet. I filled it up with all my fun things and have room to grow and buy more, which I'm sure I will do. Starting with my daughter's room here across the hall, let me show you what I did with her guest bedroom that I made personalized with her things in it. So when you walk in, I have this small wall here that my son left this three shelf unit for me and I didn't want to get rid of it because I knew I was going to use it one day and it fits perfectly here. So I had this lamp that I used and I found all these little things at garage sales. This is off the marketplace. These are real pretty glass frames. So I found two of those and then all these little boxes and candles and that little makeup tote there at the bottom. 
So I wanted to bring in the zebra that she had in her original bedroom. She had hot pink and zebra, but we wanted to update it a little bit with light gray, dark gray, and teal walls. So I thought that was just a little bit prettier updated version. So I found this shelf at a garage sale. This was purple. I painted it black. Got to fill my little frame there. And I put some candles and some picture frames on that. So I thought that made for a cute area when you first walk in. And like I said, I have accent lights everywhere, so I keep a lot of lights on all day long. And then for her bed, um, somehow when we moved, <laughs> I don't know how, but we lost her headboard that it came with the set. So I found this at one of those storage units. Someone was selling it for $5 and it was missing one of the knobs. So what I did was I went to a hardware store and those are crystal doorknobs. So I put those on each side. So now the whole bed frame, other than the crystal knobs, was $5. These are a couple pillows I had already. And then one of her stuffed animals, which happened to be a zebra, which I kept. And then I kept her bedding very simple. So it's just the black dust ruffle. And then it's just a, a thin comforter. And this is uh, double-sided, so you can have black or gray. And then just to accent a little bit with zebra, I did a throw blanket on it. And then I had this mirror from her other bedroom when it was hot pink and zebra. So I put that over her bed. And then if you saw my bathroom video, I found a set of seven floating shelves that were white. And I used three of them in the bathroom. And then here's another two that came with that set that I painted black. And then found these metal buckets and put some greenery in them on each side. So I thought that looked cute. That lamp over there is from Family Dollar. They have the cutest lamps. So I bought three of them and I put them over here on this wall with her bedroom set. And then all these items here I already had. So like I said, shop in your own house first. So those are just some little covered like buckets. This was from a garage sale. Actually, all this was from a garage sale. Here's the other two little cubicles that I had that were white that I painted teal. And I add a little bit of chicken wire in the back with some little X's and O's. So when you have a two or three color palette in mind, it's so much easier to find things to match your rooms. So anytime I saw this teal color or anything zebra from a garage sale, again, I bought it. And then it just finishes everything up. This pencil, this pencil cup here came uh, with hot pink on the top, so I just painted over the hot pink so that her little accessories would match. And I covered her chair with zebra fabric. Again, you just take the cover off, staple, staple gun the corners, and put it back on. And then this area here originally had a makeup table and bench but we didn't use it very much and it was just collecting dust so believe it or not i actually did sell it i actually did get rid of something so i put this here which i already had and then on the floor i found this beautiful wooden chest that i stuck a pillow in another throw blanket a little bit of greenery and then you know how you see those beads that you can put pretty much anywhere they're like long strands of beads. I couldn't find one that was black and white, so that's actually just one of my necklaces that I have draped over that. So I thought that area would be really cute. And then I loved these built-in drawers. They don't take up any more room and they hold a lot. And I'll give you a quick scan. And then this wall was awesome because look at that. That chest of drawers fit perfectly there. And then her whole room was done. So again, you can pretty much decorate anything, a craft room, a sewing room, a playroom. Just pick a few colors that you want and decorate around that and everything comes into place. I hope you found this video useful if you're thinking about personalizing or decorating any empty space that you might have. Please subscribe and like this video so I can keep them coming. There's a lot more to show you. Thanks for stopping by. Until next time. Bye.